Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to take a look at some of the finer points of using the Arc Tool. First thing I want to point out is you'll notice that the Arc Tool icon, the button, actually has a little drop down arrow next to it. If you click the drop down arrow, you get to choose from one of four different Arc types. We're going to look at each of these real quick, starting with the three point Arc. So, with any of these Arc tools, you will get a cursor that includes a pencil and a little image of the Arc you're drawing. Notice on the image right now, that I have a single dot. That indicates that I need to pick the first point of the arc I'm going to draw. So what I want to do over here on the C is get a nice round arc here, half circle. So I'm going to start by picking this first point right here. Then it's going to ask, you can see it's asking for the second point of the arc. I'm going to use the middle of this top part of the C. And now it's asking for the third point. So for the third point, I'm going to drag straight across, use inferencing to go straight across from that first point, giving me a nice round arc right there. So again, first point, then I'm going to find my second point, and then click to my third point. Looks good. I'm using eraser to just get rid of those extra lines. So that's the three point arc. If I come up here and click on the down arrow again, I have the option of arc, pi, and two point arc. Arc and pi are exactly the same. The difference between the two is that when I create an arc with pi, it's actually going to always close the space up as opposed to arc, which is going to give me just an arc. All right, so with arc, what I'm going to do is pick a point to start at, and this is the middle of my uh, arc that I'm creating. So I'm going to have an arc. I want it to go from this corner down to this space right here. So I'm just going to click right up on this line, and I'm going to drag an arc out to 90 degrees. When I click, that's the arc I get. So again, click, click. I can roll that along and click. So again, with the pi command, we're looking at that, it looks very similar. Click, click, but when I close it, it actually creates a surface. So that's the only difference between those two. And you notice as I did that too, watch the little circles, click, click, it's asking me first, second, and third point with the cursor. All right, so there is, I'm gonna delete my extra lines again. There is one more type of arc. This is probably the most commonly used arc, and it is the two-point arc. With the two-point arc, I'm going to pick two points and then use my third point to indicate the bulge or radius of that arc. All right, so I'm going to use this arc to put uh, an arc right here on the end of this C. So I'm going to pick a point. I'm just going to use the midpoint here. That's fine. And as I drag out, you can see I have this arc following me. If I come up and move along this top line, you can see I have that, that uh, line is following me and it's following at a tangent to this first line. So from straight up, it's going to continue a smooth line there. If I move my mouse along far enough on this horizontal line, it snaps and this is going to give me a line that is tangent both to the start and the end line. So I'm going to go ahead and click there. Now as a default again, it's going to snap to that tangent, but I do have the ability to come and slide this in and out and move it where I want it to. So I can come out here to get a half circle. I can come in here to get a more shallow arc. In this case, I am going to snap to that purple line to get my tangent. And that gives me that tangent. Now a little, little shortcut, what I can do here is I can actually click on my first point and move out. Rather than clicking and moving the arc, if I double click on this point right now, it will actually automatically clean that up. It will get rid of those extra lines. Even cooler is if I come in and double click on another corner. So if I click right here, just double click, it will automatically apply that arc that I put on last time and clean it up. So I have to come through and erase it like I do on this one. This also works on inside corners. So if I come in here and um, put a little tangent arc right there, I can actually double click here, here, and here to do the same thing. You notice that when I did that arc, it did close that space in. It is redrawing those lines, so it does recreate a surface. So I do have to select and delete that extra piece right there. All right, another cool thing I can do here is once an arc is completed, I can actually manipulate it. So I could take this arc right here, pick on it, and look up here at Entity Info. Entity Info is gonna give me some information like the length, the number of segments, and most importantly, what I look at here is the radius. So if I wanted to take this up and say make a, uh, 24 inch or two foot radius, look how that changes. See how it's different from the rest? So once an arc is created, I can come back in 
and make changes to it as long as the curve never gets exploded. So there you go, just a couple of quick tips on getting the most out of the arc command. Thank you.